You are listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. Hi and hello. My name is Keith Baudry and you are listening to the Spectrum Sci-Fi Show here on WRUU. Uh, During this show I like to play uh, some old 50s. Uh, sci-fi radio plays, particularly the Dimension X series. We are on episode 6 tonight, or 7, I'm not sure, kind of lose count. Uh, Last week was Almost Human. If you missed out on the live broadcast of that, I am sorry there is no recorded podcast of that show, because my recording software... Got really tired and went to sleep, I guess. I I don't know what happened, but that is not there. So I'm sorry about that. I will be better for you, my darlings. In other news, today, uh, two movies that I would consider sci-fi genre. Uh, even though superhero genre is kind of its own thing, the Power Rangers still kind of mesh into that. The Power Rangers movie reboot after 20 years of silence has released today that is in theaters it is receiving middle of the road reviews Uh, people seem to like it some people don't if you're a fan of the power rangers then i yeah i bet you'd be hard pressed to not like it i You've got to miss the old stuff. But if you're so in love with the 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 retro feel of the old ones, then why do you want a new movie anyway? So, I don't know. It's each their own. Uh, another movie that came out today, Life. A movie starring Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal in space. Um, this one seems to be an alien arrival uh, knockoff there, which... In my opinion, those are both excellent, excellent movies. Um, So even if it's a lesser form of those two films, it's probably worth seeing. Um, Especially anything that involves some hostile life form in space on a spaceship. That's a must-see in my opinion. But not everyone shares my opinion. Which leads me to read to you guys this general disclaimer (laughs) the viewpoints expressed in this following program are not necessarily those of wruu its license holder or its staff it's basically whatever i say does not mean everyone at wruu agrees with me so just so we get that out of the way we know that Uh, i'm going to jump into this week's dimension x episode and I I don't have a name for it. Do I? Do I have a name for it? I don't have a name for it. <laughs> Wait. The Lost Race. The Lost Race. That's what we'll be listening to today. And as usual, I'll be interrupting this um, sci-fi radio play with tech and entertainment news. Uh, Every 10 minutes or so, you'll hear my nasally stopped up voice. Um, Yeah, so it's six season around Savannah. So just bear with me here. (laughs) Anyway, Dimension X, 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 X. Adventures in time and space told in future tense. Dimension X. When man first crossed the vast distances of outer space to land on strange worlds, he found that Someone had been there before him. The ruined canals of Mars, 
the smashed cities of Titan and Centaurus II and III, all these were evidence that 100,000 years ago, a race of intelligent beings built their cities across the galaxy. They knew space travel, atomic power, astrophysics, and engineering. And then they destroyed themselves. Completely. So that of all the cities on a thousand worlds, only dust and rubble remained. Why? Why did these beings obliterate all record of themselves? That is the mystery of the lost race. The freighter Carilia, bound out of Earth for Cetus Alpha 2, came into normal flight after 103 days in overdrive. The stars were unfamiliar. The constellations known on Earth had disappeared. But there was a yellow sun off to port, and about it revolved three planets. What do you make of it, Briggs? It isn't on any of the star charts, Captain Wharton. I checked through. One and three are dead, all right. Have to take a closer look at number two. Turn up the vision scale. Hmm, polar ice caps. She's green around the belt. Let's take her down to a five-mile orbit. Swing around her for a look. Alert for deceleration. Aye, sir. Throw in the manuals. Power room. Power room, aye. We're going down to have a look at something. Give us just enough power to keep her under control. All right, Briggs. Hang on to your stomach. You sent for me, Captain Morton? Get me, Mr. Al. I... Do you mind if I sit down? Free fall sickness? Well, I'm afraid I'm not an old space hand. Oof. We'll level out in a minute. Do you want something? Yes. We come out of overdrive, smack in the middle of a new planetary system. Briggs says it's unreported. Well, that's rather good news, isn't it? Depends. Press report's pretty common. But we'll stake a claim on her in case there are any mineral discoveries. Well, I meant the possibility of archaeological finds. I'm afraid I'll leave that to you, Mr. Howell. You're the expert. Coming up five, Captain. Level off. Hang on, Howell. Power room. Hold her steady, she goes. We'll orbit at slow cruising speed. All right. Clear the scope, Briggs. Aye, sir. Nice looking piece of real estate. Well, the space guard requires I check up for radioactives, gold, and lost race rooms. Your landing? Landing. I've got a schedule to keep, Mr. Howe. I can't sit down on every lump of dirt I run into. We'll do a spectroscope check, and I figured you'd spot any ruins. All right. Wait a minute. Hmm? There in the lower quadrant. What? That bold spot in the vegetation. Those are ruins, all right. Are you sure, Howe? Yes. I've seen the lost race rubble on Centaurus, too. There. You can see it plainly, dust and rubble. No, that's what I get for calling in an expert. Briggs, stand by to take it down to 5,000 feet. Aye, sir. All this stinking luck. There goes my schedule. <laughs> seen enough, Howell? This is going to set me back five hours. Interesting. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Believe it. Marvelous. Incredible. Stop sputtering out. What is it? Look over that rise in the ground. It's hmm? a section of the city still standing. Hey, you're right. That hill must have shielded it from the blast. Captain, you've got to land. Land? You've got to. This is the first lost race site that's ever been spotted, of course. You'll land. Oh, well, we get a thousand dollar bonus for every day under par for the run. But you don't understand. It's the biggest find in the century. We can shard it, and you'll have to get back somehow. But... That's all. I'm not sitting down to rake over old dust heaps. Captain Wharton, I'm on commission to the space guard. You may have to answer to them. I'll think up one. Look, Howell, strictly speaking, you're a passenger. Well, you've got you to land. You don't belong on the bridge. I'm not landing down there. Briggs, emergency from the power room. Something must have blown. Power room. Power room. Stanton, what's wrong down there? Stanton. Well, he doesn't answer. Anything serious, Captain? Well, reaches the fuel locker. That five pounds of ascending will go and kick us right out of space. Stanton. Stanton. Power room, I. What happened? What blew? Main tube coupling. She's secured What's now. What's the damage? The main tube's burnt out. Bearing, the coupling, injector valve, and the needle gauge. Can you make repairs? Not in flight. Can you raise enough power to land? Well, I don't know, Captain. The wiring shot. It's about like a tomcat. I might be able to get something from the deceleration auxiliaries. Get a jury rig on her. We'll try to set her down. Aye, sir. Briggs. Yes, sir. Alert for crash landing. <laughs> Signal room. 
Signal room. Signal, I. Langston, get off a position fix and SOS standby. Aye, sir. Well, Mr. Howell, I guess you're going to join your friends in the lost race. I just hope it's not permanently. Level off now, Captain. Turn her up a point. That's it. She's bucking bad. Five more minutes and the whole place will shake loose. Power room. Stand by for Bob Blast on signal. All righty. I'm going to try for that clearing. Too narrow. Two to one for a dollar. All right. Hang on. Briggs! Briggs! Oh, you all right? I hit my head on the panel. Well, uh, I seem to be ill. All assembled. Uh, we're down. Guess our luck hasn't run out yet. Calling power room. Power room, I. All right down there? Yeah, I'm all right. Stanton, I want a complete damage check and repair estimate. Get up here as soon as you got it for me. Briggs, you all right now? Yes, sir, I guess so. As soon as we get Dan's report, get a detail app, help him with repairs. Captain Wharton. What is it, Langston? My speaker line's out. Sending circuits blew. Spare tubes? Uh, that was a pretty rough landing, Captain. They're gone. I can't replace them this side of Luna Space Station. I see. Well, the SOS ought to do it. And the Space Guard monitor reports out They aren't with... going to, Captain. Why not? Sending circuits went out when the blast went off down there. I didn't get the SOS out. Thank you, Langston. Get back and see what you can salvage. Aye, sir. Does that mean bad news? We were in overdrive, Mr. Howell. It would take 40 years to search the distance we've traveled in one day. Consequently, when a ship doesn't make port and doesn't transmit a position fix, they forget about it. Oh. I see. And with the radio out, we blast off on our own power. Or we don't get off. Got your damage report, Captain. Well? Here. It's on a B-23 checklist. Mm. Not bad? Worse. That and, uh, how long will it take you for repairs? I don't know. An estimate. I know Gypsy Fortune Teller. How about the lifeboat? For deep space? What are they teaching at Sands Point now? Basket weaving? Damn, the lifeboat couldn't lift half a light year off this here mud heap. Damn, I'll take just so much... Can it be converted to Bessendium Drive? The converter links were mashed when we came down. How long is it going to take you to repair the main drive? Look, Captain, I got two hands. You want me to hold a lug wrench in my teeth? See here, Captain. You I... see here, Captain. The whole lousy crew's been spitting all over me ever since we blasted off. Now you can all wait on me. Who do you think you are, Captain? The only power man on this ship, that's who. If you ain't satisfied with the way I'm working, go hire yourself another boy. The woods are lousy with him. I'll take my own sweet time. What's the matter with him? Got a bug in his ear? Space fatigue, Captain. He's been locked up in the power room four days. Oh, we don't have enough trouble. Briggs, remind me to slug the psychotechnician when we get back. Don't tell me nobody gets into deep space who isn't emotionally stable. What are you going to do about him, Captain? Nothing. Stay off his back. Oh, but you can't. Captain's the only man who can get us out of here. If we want to hit the cradle at New York spaceport again, we've got to keep him happy. Captain Wharton, as long as we're landed and we do have to wait for the engines to be fixed, I suppose we can explore the lost race ruins. I'm particular... Look, Mr. Howell, I can't spare the men. We are now stuck tight until Danton gets those engines fixed. And if he can't, which is entirely possible, we are stuck, period. All oh. right. Oh. Briggs, I want you to keep a careful eye on the men. Space fatigue is nothing compared to what we might run up against now. Captain Wharton... Captain, I've got it. The any circuits? No, uh, no, sir, but I picked up the incoming video band. Well, that's something. Uh, can you get the mail call through? A man could use a little lift right now. Well, the scheduled one-way personals are due at 2330 Greenwich. Good. That ought to help morale. Langston, uh, rig the receiving booth. Aye, sir. Powell, this is a break. Seeing the folks at home may be enough to keep everybody on an even keel. I know I'll be glad to see that kid of mine. All right, we're back. Yeah, so sounds like the beginning to the plot of Alien to me. So they found some kind of uh, civilization on Mars, similar to the way the Nostromo found 
a crashed ship on some random planet. Uh, they're trying to check out uh, this this um, phenomenon, these ruins, and getting nothing, no response. Uh, seems like it's completely abandoned. Again, similar to Alien. Uh, they have apparently crash-landed their ship, and they're like, oh, well, we're here, might as well explore. Again, similar to Alien. So, this definitely came before the movie. Maybe uh, Ridley Scott had heard this Dimension X episode before? I don't know. But definitely a lot of similarities there. Similarities is what I was about to say. (laughs) Similarities. But (coughs) continuing on, uh, Mass Effect released during this past week. Mass Effect Andromeda. This is completely unrelated to the original Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, this is an entire, entirely new story. Um, it is in the Mass Effect universe, and that is about where the similarities end. <laughs> uh, this particular game, uh, you are you take the role as a Pathfinder, which, as I've come to find out, you're pretty much space Jesus to these people. <laughs> they, you are leading a team of, um, of specialized alien recruits that go out and you survey planets and you are looking for the next home for humans in a far away galaxy, uh, the Andromeda galaxy. You are met with quite a few hiccups in your original plan when you get to Andromeda and naturally nothing is the way you imagined it would be. Uh, This game is receiving about like Power Rangers, middle of the range reviews. Um, People have some pretty rough things to say about it but it but it's such a beloved franchise that no one can really call it a bad game so no one does for fear of being crucified on the internet <laughs> um i've played it myself and it's uh it's definitely got a lot of the appeal of the first mass effect game if you ever played that one where the story kind of drudged on and uh your your side quest were pretty much the meat and the fun of the entire game. Um, I will say that the combat in Mass Effect Andromeda is nothing like the first game. The combat is extremely uh, fast-paced, um, and you're very you have a very mobile character. Uh, whereas before, sometimes in Mass Effect One, I felt like a uh, a tank of of some kind. Um, moving slowly about, but yeah, so that is a game that maybe you would like to play. (laughs) I'm watching my words here on the radio. All right, moving on. It looks like Peter Capaldi is signed on for his last season as the doctor, the infamous famous, legendary Doctor Who. Um, He has a new companion, an African-American girl named Bill. (laughs) That's... She's British African-American girl. Is that a thing? I'm being corrected here (sighs) By, by the peanut gallery here in the studio with me. So, this girl of color. Why is that relevant? I don't know. That's just what I noticed. There's there's only been one other uh, colored companion. That was Martha Jones. And she's my favorite companion. Period. 
uh, with, with the tenth jock, with the tenth doctor. Um, it just seemed like every episode, David Tennant was shouting her name at the top of his lungs, and it was amazing. <laughs> Great times, good times. Um, so I'm excited for this. Uh, I'm I'm not. I don't really care much for Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Uh, he had a few. There's a few cool moments where he does feel like a really cool guy, but for the most part, he's just kind of old and senile. <laughs> it's kind of how he comes across, uh, which at first was a really welcome change from the kind of goofy, childlike Matt Smith we had for a while. Um, it was a nice change of pace to get to get to uh, Capaldi. A um, little bit less of a pretty boy there. But, yeah, I'm interested to see uh, how this season goes. We've got, I'm looking here at this article, and it's got photos of a new villain um, called the Monks. The Monks. They look like, uh, if you've ever seen underworld series they look like the really old vampires <laughs> from the underworld series uh very interesting looking characters they they definitely don't look like someone you'd sit down and have tea with um but that's just me uh yeah so maybe a little bit maybe one more thing we can talk about here uh, this just because it's amazing that someone <coughs> would go to these links. Um, Star Trek fan recreates the Enterprise from original blueprints. Um, looks like James Cauley, the guy that built it, has an eye for detail. Uh, he came about the original blueprints for the Enterprise. Um from the original set design from Paramount, actually, uh, courtesy of William Theus, the original costume designer of Star Trek. Uh, apparently, Yahoo featured James Cauley in its hashtag obsessed video series about super fans. Uh, if you're looking at these pictures, I I would say. Wow, man. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I would look up um, Enterprise Original Blueprints. You got you to gotta take a look at this. James Cauley. <laughs> Good job, man. Good job. I would do this just to live in that thing. Like, I want that to, this room right here, I want that to be my office. Looks like some weird... I'm not going to say that. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to Dimension X. I want to find out what happens in this weirdly alien uh, Martian Dimension X episode. So, here we are going back to Dimension X. No, no. Yeah. Mr. Langston, get Hanson out of the booth. You wear the glass right off the tube. Ah, take it easy, Williams. Everybody gets three minutes. Hey, Kelly, I bet that dame of yours burned up the circuits, huh? How'd you know it was his girl? You can't tell through the booth. Well, who else would call that eight? What'd you say, mm. Kelly? Oh, nothing. She don't have to. She just stands in front of the pickup tube and... Oh, brother! <laughs> I can just see that. Hey, hey, it's a boy. A boy? Alice had a boy. What? They're going to show him to me in the circuit tomorrow. Congratulations. Oh, hey, <laughs> Who's okay. next, Mr. Langston? Uh, the last call's coming through now on ticker. It's for Williams. Well, hey, wait a minute, Williams. Hey, let go of my arm. What happened to my call? Uh, no call today, Dan. You're a liar, Langston. Hey. My girl calls in every scheduled circuit. That must be mine. Let go, Dad. Maybe Janie was busy waiting tables in the lunchroom. What do you know about her, Hanson? You kidding? She's a swell kid. Everybody at New York Spaceport knows her. Yeah, I've yeah. seen you hanging around Jane, too. Now, wait a minute, Dan. Take it easy, Dan. You and Williams made this up between you, didn't you? You're going to take my call, huh, Williams? You're a space happy. You used to hang around with her before I cut you out. Now listen, Dan, you were lucky enough to get her. Let well enough alone. You bet I got her all right, and you're not going to steal her back. Williams, I'm going to... Are you crazy? Damn! Get him off! Oh, lion. Get him oh, off! Hey, what's, what's going on in here? Let him fight! I'm going to kill you, you double-crossing fight! Hide my back! Grab him, Hanson. Get us on. Oh, 
saw me. Nobody took your car. Calm down, Sam. Well, I'll fix all of it. Look out. He's got a wrench. Sam, He's nuts. Ah, nobody gets a call. Nobody. How do you like that, Williams? You ain't gonna hear from Janie no more. How do you like that? After him. Kelly. Hanson. The airlock. He's left the ship. Let him go, the jealous screwball. Sure. But that's the only man who can get us off of here. I warned you, so help me, Briggs. I warned you to keep an eye on Damp. Well, I didn't think he'd go off this way. Well, it's that girl here, sir. He's crazy jealous about her. Any reason for it, Williams? No, sir. She's a good kid. Too good for Dan. I guess he's just so afraid of losing her to some other guy, he's getting psychopathic about it. Well, we've got to get him back. I want every man equipped and ready for search parties immediately. Aye, right, sir. Williams, rig some portable searchlights and issue hand blasters and radiation tickers. Kelly. Aye, right, sir. You had the second party. If you find Danton, send up a signal flare. Aye, right, sir. Unless we do find him, we'll be on this planet until the next freighter stumbles on us. Maybe 10,000 years from now. Hold that light up, Hanson. This is amazing. Captain Lost Ray's building's actually standing. Hey! What is it? Oh, it's nothing. It's shadow. This place gives me the willies be able to find out so much about them, their science, art, what they looked like, perhaps even why they destroyed themselves. I'm beginning to wonder about that, How? You sure they destroyed themselves? Maybe they lost a war to another race. Uh, the winners would have left traces. Genghis Khan, the Mongol emperor, left a pile of skulls as a monument after he destroyed his enemies, but there's been nothing like that found. No clues at all, eh? Nothing. When they decided to wipe themselves out, they did a thorough job. But Why? That's what we've been asking for 50 years. They want it to end like that. Captain, there's, there's a rise ahead. Keep going. Anything on your side, Briggs? No, sir. Hanson, what is it? I don't know, sir. Funny kind of a glow. I guess I shot without thinking. No, get trigger happy. Howell. Yes? Where do you think the light is coming from? Down there. It's an amphitheater. Stone seats and a hood. It looks like a band shell. What's up, Captain? Wait a minute. Well, Howell? No. That's the Lost Race sign on the hood. The what? Sort of hieroglyphic. It's the only thing we'd ever found before. One in each ruin. What does it mean? Some kind of a warning, I think. Come on. We're going down there. Careful now. There's a platform of some kind down there. Looks like a lecture platform, doesn't it? Or an altar. This might have been a temple. Perhaps the Lost Race sign... Had a religious significance. Uh, looks like a throne to me. A throne five feet high. Briggs, climb up there. Let's see if there are any controls for this machinery. Hi, sir. Well, this wasn't meant for any man to sit on. There's a lever up here. Shall I try it? Sure, go ahead. Hey, what the... What's that mist? It's like a steam bath. I wonder if Kelly and Williams ran into hey, anything Kelly, like... Hold that light up. Shut up and keep looking for Danton. What? Look there. In the hood. It's Williams and Kelly. That crazy jet jockey. When I find Please, him, I'm going to beat his brains out. You could see him. A three-dimensional image. Some kind of television. Get down, Briggs. Hi, sir. Did you see it, Skipper? I was just thinking about him, and there he was. And we all saw it. Out of the way. I'm going to try it. This thing can pick up Earth. It'll replace the receiver. Danton smashed. Just throw the lever, eh? <laughs> That's my son. I'll be darned. His music lesson. Say, it reaches Earth all right. What? Imagine. Television without a transmitter. Looks like the lost race was ahead of us in more ways than one. Go up and try it, Howell. It's amazing, amazing. Television without a transmitter. This, this machine may be the clue to the mystery of the lost race. I'll try it. Mary, I've told you I like my paper first in the morning. Oh. If that youngster wants to know how the tigers did, let him wait until I am... My father in Detroit. Remarkable, Captain. You can see the whole room clearly. Say, how about me, Captain? Let me get up there. I'd like to see my baby. Alice told me all about... Ouch. What's the matter, Hanson? I kicked something, a wrench. Well, hold it up. What? It's Danton's. That means he's been here. We're on his trail, all right. 
Come on, Hal, let's go. Oh, but the baby it wouldn't take a minute, Captain. Later, yes. Hanson. We've got to find Danton first. All right, now, let's get moving. Hold it. What's that? The recall flare. Kelly and his men have found Danton. Oh, I hope that crazy fool is in one piece. We start back now, Captain. Yes. That came from the ship. Another flare? No, that was an explosion. That's all we need now. Something more to happen to the ship. All right, and we're back. So, a television without a transmitter. <laughs> That's uh, about all I got from that. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> it sounds like they went out searching for the mechanic that got angry and left. Um, who let this guy on the space station with his attitude problems? I don't know. I thought there was, maybe not in the 50s, but I feel like today there are quite a few like personality exams and quite a few interviews you have to go through to go out into space and have a responsibility like, you know, um, investigating a possible alien race. But I, but what do I know? I don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm not an astronaut, so, but... <laughs> If, as a business, you enjoy our programming on WRUULP, please support the station with a donation. Let your customers, neighbors, and friends know that you share our vision of building a thriving community based on diverse, vibrant radio programming. As a business partner, our listeners will know you support Savannah's only broad-based community radio station. Become a tower sponsor or underwriter. To check out the levels of corporate sponsorship and to donate, go to www.wruu.org slash corporate. Again, to check out the levels of corporate sponsorship and to donate, go to www.wruu.org slash corporate. Thank you for listening to and supporting WRUULP. Now... We're going to read a little bit of news again for you guys and then <coughs> dive back into the last 10 or so minutes of this Dimension X episode. Maybe we'll find out what happened to that alien race. Or if uh, if my guess is right, we'll just have some weird cliffhanger, maybe this happened to the alien race ending. Um, so that'll be fun. Um Jumping into the news bits, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 uh, is on its way to theaters here soon. May 5th, it will be released. So, where, where are we? March, April, May. So, we're about a month away from this amazing greatness, awesomeness that I'm going to be there for. So, yeah. Next week, Ghost in the Shell opens up. Opens in theaters. Um, it has had quite a uh, life cycle of marketing. Uh, very pervasive marketing for this film. It's all over the place. I am really excited to see it. If you've seen the original, then you're probably excited for this as well. Um, it's an amazing... The original anime is... Uh, just ripped apart genre conventions and really kind of carved out its own place and inspired quite a few followers, uh, including The Matrix, uh, which is all amazing stuff. Um, so speaking of The Matrix, there is a reboot, revival, uh, universe continuation type deal Um the director of that movie has said if he has openly said it is not a reboot they are not redoing film number one it's he said if you've seen the animatrix then you know what we're trying to do here that you can make a film in this universe uh so 
That's an interesting concept. I'm looking forward to that. Anything to continue the Matrix. (laughs) But also, Disney apparently is planning Star Wars films into the 2030s. So is that one a year? Till 2030? That sounds cool to me. I like Star Wars. So get used to Star Wars everywhere you look. Yep. Eventually it'll be the cool and hip thing to hate on it. So (laughs) I'm not looking forward to that day. I will be sad. Anyway. Excuse me here. Death Note, a dark anime, um, dark and morbid, probably horrifying, (laughs) I don't know, anime series, um, is receiving a live action version, a live action um, interpretation uh, by Netflix. Willem Dafoe is playing the series... Uh, main demon, if you will, Ryuk, Ryuk, um, and I am, I feel like that casting could not be any more perfect, Willem Dafoe as Ryuk, I am stoked about that, uh, the rest of the movie looks kind of cheesy, um, as I saw <laughs> one Twitter, uh, one Twitter user posted, um, Hi, my name is Light Yagami. Uh, I'm a pretty average high schooler with a not-so-average secret. <laughs> and then it plays the um, the iCarly uh, theme song. <laughs> it's just funny. I really think Netflix is going to dumb down that series a lot. It got really dark in some areas. Um, and I don't think they're going to go there. I think they're going to keep it um, above water. Which... I guess that's okay. I don't know. The actual fans of the series will hate it. <laughs> They'll hate it. They'll rip on it. But that remains to be seen. That is on its way. Um, another thing having to do um, with Netflix. <coughs> Captain Planet. The complete series. All episodes of Captain Planet ever are coming to Netflix. So, I hope you didn't have anything to do with your life. Because I know you're going to sit there and watch them all back to back to back to back to back. I used to love this show as a kid. It will be interesting to see how the show matches what I remember of the show. (laughs) That's always fun. Um, But... Yeah, so that's about all I've got for you right now. I'm going to try to scrounge up a few more little articles and maybe some tech news here in the end for you. Uh, And we're going to dive back in and close out this Dimension X episode. I will see you on the other side. Oh, it's the main jet smashed flat. Of all the sneaking rot. Check through the ship for further damage. Aye, sir. Oh, look at those plates. Crumpled like an accordion. Captain! Oh, Captain! Here comes Kelly's body. We got him. We got Danton. Hold it. What happened here? Somebody blew up the main jets. Danton, do you know anything about this? No, sir. Not much, he doesn't. He's crazy enough to blow us all up. Listen, Hanson, I admit I went off my head tonight, but I'm not crazy enough to commit suicide. The jets are smashed. We're all marooned up the same creek. I still think he's got something to do with it. Lay off, Hanson. We found him wandering up in the hills. And he was with us when the blast went off. Yes, that's right. We saw your recall flare before the explosions. Oh, I guess that puts Stanton on the clear. Well, then who did it, Captain? I don't know, how. Looks like somebody didn't want us to leave this planet. Well, we still got one slim chance left. If we can repair the lifeboat... Skip it. It's gone. Gone? The escape port is open. The boat's missing. What else? The arms chest was cleaned out, sir, and the fuel locker was jimmied open. The sendium bars are gone. You sure? You look for yourself, sir. She's clean. I see. There's only one answer left. There's something or somebody out in those ruins trying to get us. Maybe that lost race decided they weren't going to stay lost. 
You think some of them may, may still be alive? Who else could have blown up our ship? Keep your blaster up, Hal. And be careful. It's a hair trigger. What are we doing back at the television machine, Captain? I thought we were looking for the lifeboat. We are. Whoever blew up the ship must be around here. Might as well try to use the machine to track them down. Yeah. Yeah. Catch them with their own gadget, huh? That's right. All right, Hal, you're the expert. Get up there and try to find him. I hope it works. Well? Trying, Captain. Nothing but mist. I don't understand it. It reached all the way to Earth before I saw my father in Detroit. Mary, my paper's all rumpled again. What? There it is again. My father in Detroit. I've told him time and time again I don't like a messy paper. Look at that. No selector control yet. All the way to Earth. You can see the whole room, the goldfish bowl, the, the antibacassas on the chairs. Yet we can't pick up something less than a mile away. Knock it off, Al. We're wasting time. <coughs> Come on. That gadget won't work. We'll have to comb these rooms inch by inch. I don't understand. Neither do I. We'll cut behind the hood here and go on. Briggs, you take the lead with the radiation ticker. We might be able to pick up a reading on where the rocket fuel is hidden. Aye, sir. All right, let's go. I can't understand why that machine can pick up earth and not... Captain! Captain! Briggs, what is it? Captain, help! I'm falling! It's a cave-in. Hang on, Briggs. I'm slipping, Captain. <laughs> Grab his wrist. All right. Now, Got pull. It. Pull. Uh, higher. Higher. Uh, higher. Uh, what happened? I was just walking along and the ground caved in. What? It's some kind of shaft. Hold your light over it, Captain. Oh! Fifty feet deep in a stone bottom. I could have split my head open like a grapefruit. Something... Down there, hold that light steady. Amazing. Amazing. Looks like a pile of bones to me. Two piles. They may be the first skeletal remains ever found of the lost race. I've got to get down in there. We haven't got time, Howell. Come on. Let me have your binoculars. Wonderful. That small skeleton must be an infant. They've been laid out carefully. It's a burial chamber. The way they're lying, it's probably a mother and infant. Yeah. The tail. She's definitely anthropoid. Oh, you... You mean apes? Something like that. Yet they had atomic power and built cities across the galaxy. Amazing. Oh, we haven't got time. Hello, that's funny. The, the little one is different. The, the caudal bones are different. No tail. Listen, Hal. What do I care whether they had tails or not? Come on, now. It's Howell. almost as if... Well, they, they, they did have atomics and radiation does funny things to heredity. They had that problem of mutations in Detroit. What... Detroit. That must be it. What? The new atomics plant at Detroit. They tore down my father's house to make room for it. Quickly, Captain. Oh, where are you going? Back to the machine. I've got a theory that may solve the whole mystery of what happened to the lost race. I don't care what happened to the dead ones, Hal. I want to find the living ones who wrecked my ship. I think this machine may give us both answers. There's the house, Detroit, down to the last detail. Oh, come on, Don. We know all but that. But don't you understand? That house was torn down. I got a letter before we lifted off Earth. It's gone. But it's on the television machine. Captain, that machine isn't television. It's a thought projector. What? It only mirrors what's in your own mind. But, Mr. Howell, we saw Earth. It was really there. But it was just because we imagined it, Briggs. It's a thought projection. I can produce any mental image that occurs to me on this machine. New York spaceport, a space guard patrol, anything. Anything? Yes. And now I think I know what inspired the lost race to do what they did. It was fear. Fear of what was in their own minds. They could all see it with machines like this. But fear, fear of what? They foresaw the future. So they destroyed themselves. Every last one of them. Hold it, Hal. Are you sure they're all dead? 100,000 years ago. Then who blew up the ship and stole our lifeboat? Danton. Danton? But why? He was pathologically jealous. Yes, but blowing up the ship was like committing suicide. He wasn't crazy enough to do that. The lost race was after they looked at this machine. You mean Danton did too? We found his wrench here. You're right. He must have looked at the machine and thought it was television. He must have seen all his fears about losing his girl confirmed. That was enough to make him completely unbalanced. But he was with Kelly when that explosion went off. He's got an ironclad alibi. No, he hasn't. It wouldn't take a power man long to sneak back to the ship and rig a delayed action fuse. Howell, we've got to get back to the ship before Danton. All right, Captain, stay right there. That's Danton. It's in the dark. You make a perfect target there. Stop your gun. I've got a blaster set at wide angle. Drop him. He's got his cold. I've been following you, Warden. I wanted to tell you, I'm going back to Earth. 
I got the lifeboat heading over that rise. It won't work in deep space. <laughs> you believe me when I told you that, didn't you? Well, I've got it fixed. And with that bisendium fuel, it'll be a milk run. I'll reach the space guard station at Volta with a long, sad story about how the rest of you exploded in mid-space. Damn much murder. Yeah, yeah, that's just what it is. And easy, too. Denton, you can't just leave us here. Watch me. Sit in front of that machine and watch me. Yeah, I know what it is. I know it's a television without a transmitter. And I did some checking up. I've seen how you were stealing my calls. Trying to steal my girl. Stanton, you're sick. You Pretty can't... Pretty that lost race. They built some machine. And it showed me plenty. It showed me enough to kill you. Oh, you've got it all wrong. This isn't a television machine. What are you trying to pull, Wharton? I saw it. Those were your own thoughts, Stanton. Those things you saw exist only in your mind. Shut up before I blast all of you down. You're just trying to lie out of it, that's all. But I know the truth when I see it. And you're going to die. All right, Danton, but you're not going to get away with it. Look at the machine. What's that? The machine. It's the space guard patrol, Danton. Look, they're coming. X-3 to command. Spotted the Corellias reported. Preparing to land. That's the space guard, Danton. Yeah, whole patrol. You're lying, you're lying. They couldn't come. There wasn't any SOS. X-3 to command. Preparing to land. There's a clearing. That's enough, Howell. All right, Danton. They'll be coming over the horizon. Drop your gun and give yourself up. Oh, no. Oh, they're not going to catch me. I'll be away in that lifeboat before they land. Stay still, all of you. Stay where you are. I Stanton. still got you covered. Stanton, look out behind you. Ah! Burial shaft. He fell in it. Hold the light down, Briggs. Well? He's dead. Deader than the lost race. And what about those space guard cruisers? Out of my head. Just imagine them. There they were on the machine. Poor Danton believed they were real. I wish they were real so we could get off this planet. No, it doesn't matter. We know where the lifeboat is now. We can send one man to bring back help. And it won't be Danton. The machine got him the same way it got the lost race. Through fear. But what was the lost race afraid of, Howell? Changing. Changing? Look at those skeletons down there. They had atomic energy, but they couldn't control it. Look, the baby is different from the other. The race was changing by mutation. Mutation? Look at those skeletons. Now imagine a shifted hip socket so they could walk upright. The baby was already without a tail. But how? That would mean they were changing into... Into... Yes, Captain. The lost race committed suicide rather than face the fear of seeing their descendants become such horrible creatures as men. You have just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. All right, I'm back. So what an ending. I told you it was going to be one of those maybe this happened to them thing. But I like how uh, at the very end there, he falls down the the guy with the weird space sickness who shouldn't be on the spaceship at all, in my opinion. He, he slipped through the, the screening process. <laughs> um, anyway, he falls down this long shaft. And he's down at the bottom, and they're they're both looking down, and they see the alien skeletons, and they're like, uh, "I know what what they were afraid of." It's like, look, they were mutating, they were changing. Uh, look, their their hip bones were disjointed, and they had already lost a tail, and they were being made to upright to walk upright, and that's what killed them. Is that they were afraid? They'd rather die then become such horrible creatures as humans <laughs> it's like we're not that bad are we really <laughs> well that sucks i mean i guess if i was i don't know if i was gonna mutate into an alien i'd i'd totally go along with that i think that's cool it's cool with me you, you want me to grow a tail i'm cool i i was just saying the other day how, how bad i wanted the tail think i was watching beauty and the beast and i was like man i'm jealous 
That guy's got a tail. He's just walking around. I think he's just a wagon. I bet when he's happy, he like wags back and forth. Anyway, <coughs> I've got 10 minutes here. Um, and I'm going to limp along with a little bit of a uh, a little bit of news that didn't quite make it so early. So, a <coughs> a common theme in every episode of the Spectrum Sci-Fi Show so far is that I mentioned the casting for Deadpool two. All right, so Ryan Reynolds obviously is Deadpool. Zazzy Beats is Domino for reasons um, the director had some kind of. Uh, they had auditions for Zazie, and she performed across from Ryan Reynolds, and they said the chemistry there was fantastic, that they're going to be great together on screen. They they can take her and write the role around her, and so awesome. Cool. That'll be cool. Uh, Domino's going to have a white eye uh, because she's black this time around, which I think is cool. Um, awesome. Uh, <coughs> now back to cable though so my first little um little report on cable casting was pierce brosnan um was a possibility uh and then i reported that russell crowe was a possibility now i am here to tell you that the front runner for cable's role the role of cable is none other than michael shannon uh, Michael Shannon. You may know him uh, from his... Uh, he played in a detective movie. What is that movie called? Something Ice. Mr. Ice or, or something like that. Uh, but he also played a much bigger role that you will probably immediately recognize. General Zod in the new Man of Steel film. Uh, Michael Shannon. Uh, I think he would make a great cable. His overtly serious face would come across beautifully for that character um his ridiculously square jaw (laughs) would make perfect sense for that character um he's got the right age to him uh it's all very interesting stuff very interesting stuff i'd like to see michael shannon as cable um (coughs) Moving on, um, Near Automata is still receiving rave reviews. People love this video game. Um, people say the more they finish it, the more they love it. Uh, so every time people say they've completed the game, the reviewers that I've read said they've completed the game five times and gotten five different endings for this video game, which that sounds awesome to me. That sounds really cool. So that every time you finish it, it adds something new, something beautiful to the story, Um, which is very interesting. That sounds like a cool game for me to play. Uh, The description of the game is unlike any you've ever seen. It was something like um, an action weird, uh, I don't remember, something sci-fi RPG type thing, RPG fighter. (laughs) It's weird. Um, how they're trying to genre to to pigeonhole this thing, uh, but apparently it's it's hard to describe this game. You've just got to play it. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're into video games, that is definitely one to look at. Um, in other news, Fallout Four Virtual Reality is coming to HTC Vive and I think Xbox One Scorpio. No news yet if it's coming to, like, PS4 Pro or anything like that. Um, But I will say that Fallout 4 is one of the best games of this current generation um, of consoles. It's amazing. I put over 230 hours into that game. Um, Just buried my time in it. (laughs) <laughs> it's so absorbing. Um, I recommend, if you've never played it, I recommend you have nothing to do the first time you pick it up because it will suck you in. Um, it's so 
ridiculously addicting. Um, in a good way. It's a great game. It's a great game. In a good way. I didn't eat for days. It's 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 great. <laughs> um, in other news, let's see what we got here. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, again, another fantastic game released in the past month or so. Uh, <coughs> has announced a story expansion, like a DLC type deal, downloadable content. Uh, that will be out soon, so keep an eye out for that if um, if that's your thing. Uh, and a little bit of local sci-fi news, uh, the Green Giant of Zanzuki, a student film by Alex Greenberg, has finished filming. This movie, this little short film, has received ridiculous response from the local community in raising funds and and uh, uh, pumping out collectible items and t-shirts and, and little toys and it's just the whole community is really coming together to create this uh, this little film and it's it's cool to see it's really cool to see especially for something in the sci-fi genre uh, particularly particularly a specifically a kaiju film um, the the kind of revival of the kaiju genre is a really exciting thing to see because who doesn't love giant monsters breaking cities apart like seriously how do you not get 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 amped for that <laughs> i get amped for giant monsters destroying cities unless it's my city then i would be a power ranger and fight it <laughs> so Yep, so I've got about three minutes to go here. Um, I'm not sure what I've got left to tell all of you. Um, I watched Back to the Future the other day, and one thing we still don't have here in 2017 is flying cars. We're still missing our flying cars. So, oh, Like we were talking about, you'd have to completely redesign the traffic flow. How would you control that? It'd be utter chaos if cars could fly. Who doesn't love a little bit of chaos? So it'd probably be like uh, Judge Dredd, honestly. Like, <laughs> whenever uh, there's just people driving all around in the sky and they're all running into each other and there's explosions everywhere. <laughs> That's probably what it would feel like. Which, again, who doesn't want that? <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've, I really like blowing things up, apparently. That's a thing that excites me. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyway, I didn't mean that in like a weird way. I just mean big budget movies are fun. <laughs> so, that said, um... King Kong has received great reviews. Logan has received great reviews. But it is Beauty and the Beast that is breaking box office records. <laughs> Amazingly, uh, Disney's top grossing animated film as a reboot. They reboot their top grossing animated film. And what do you know? It is a raving hit. Um, I know we went to the theater twice, and both times there was a line to get into the showing. Granted, we waited in the line to get in, and then there was only about 20 people in the IMAX theater. But it was a late night. It was the last showing of the day, so it was late. We went the day before, and all the showings were sold out, so that says something. But apparently it's the sixth highest last i heard it was the sixth highest grossing uh opening weekend of all time um for beauty and the beast anyway i have one minute left here on the spectrum sci-fi show i wanted to thank you for listening i am keith baudry of spectrum sci-fi which will be a vendor at savannah mega comic con april 22nd We'll talk more about that later. 
Uh, my comic is for the, yeah, my comic is a thing. Um, I'm trying to think of what I'm allowed to say. It's 6 o'clock p.m. All right. You are listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul.